We really hope you can handle all the blood because MMA fights can be unapologetically gruesome sometimes. And yes, it might seem disgusting, but one of the most exciting things about MMA for diehards like us is seeing people get beat up every night, sometimes with the most devastating blows. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the 10 worst injuries in MMA history. First off, we have Chris Weidman's double leg break at UFC 261 against Uriah Hall. Weidman had just moved his family to South Carolina and was more than ready to fight Uriah Hall for the title at UFC 261 in April 2021. But 17 seconds into the fight, after he landed a low kick, his leg folded and he suffered a horrible double leg break. He instantly fell back and the referee, Herb Dean, rushed to the map. He said that Hall had won by technical knockout and let the doctors carry him to the hospital on a stretcher. The day after his surgery, he said he couldn't walk without crutches for eight weeks and it took him between six and 12 months to fully recover. Despite getting one of the worst injuries in sports, he showed his toughness by slowly getting back to light training by mid-June, just seven weeks after the injury. Next up, let's talk about Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira's arm break against Frank Mir. Frank Mir beat Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira by TKO at UFC 92. Three years later, in December 2011, they fought again at UFC 140. In their first fight, Frank easily beat Big Nog with a barrage of punches, but the second fight ended so violently that we literally cringed after watching the replays. After all, when two of the best heavyweight grapplers face off against each other, it's not very surprising to see their injuries being a record breaker. After a tough fight in the first round, the two were locked in such a position that Mir broke his opponent's arm when he bent it in a very unusual way. This was one of the worst injuries ever seen, even though UFC president Dana White called it the submission of the century. Moving on to Mark Hominick hematoma at UFC 129 against Jose Aldo. Aldo was one of the fiercest featherweights of all time and is a must-have on any list of the best MMA fighters in each weight class. So, it's not surprising that when he defended his title for the first time at UFC 129, his opponent got severely injured. In his fight against Mark Hominick, which lasted five back-and-forth rounds, he was able to land some brutal ground and pounds, including a barrage of vicious punches and forearm shots that gave his opponent a severe hematoma on the forehead. The hematoma was so big and swollen that it looked like it had a life of its own. We couldn't believe our eyes when we saw pictures of his injury. If you live for the gore, do check them out. After the fight, he was taken to the emergency room to see if there was a serious head injury as well as to reduce the swelling. Not to mention Michael Bisbing's severe eye injury against Vitor Belfort. Michael Bisbing, who's known for being a tough fighter, was hurt so badly that he had to face the damages for the rest of his life. Because of his face-off against Vitor Belfort, the former heavyweight at the UFC on FX in 2013, he has successfully made it to our list of the 10 worst injuries in MMA history. He lost the fight when a head kick knocked him out in the second round. If you think this is bad, here's what happened next. The man literally had to get his eyeball taken out. It doesn't get worse than this, guys. It just doesn't. The referee intervened at 127 of the second round, but by that time, the multiple swings aimed at him were so hard that they tore his retina and pretty much stalled his MMA career for a while. Now, for John Jones' dislocated toe against Chael Sonnen. Being the youngest light heavyweight champion in UFC history, John Jones fought Chael Sonnen at UFC 159 in April 2013, when he was only 25 years old. He was able to knock out Sonnen with a series of punches and elbows at 433 of the first round, allowing him to defend his fifth consecutive light heavyweight championship. He beat his opponent, but it wasn't easy. In the middle of the fight, when his opponent tried to take him down, he dislocated his big toe. Despite the injury and the excruciating pain that came with it, he continued to keep up a good fight. In fact, even after it, he seemed like he was better than ever when he sat to give an interview with Joe Rogan while the medical staff treated his injury. That's the victory talking, we tell you. Let's not forget Joanna Jedrzejczyk's head hematomas against Wei Li Zhang. Joanna Jedrzejczyk defended her strawweight championship against Wei Li Zhang at UFC 248 in 2020. Her third round loss against Zhang, however, resulted in one of the 10 worst injuries in MMA history. A large lump appeared on her face, just over her right eye. She had hematomas because of an unexpected headbutt, but kept fighting until the end of the fifth round. After a close decision, the judges gave her a loss through a split decision. Fans still talk about the fight she put on as the best fight in the history of women's MMA, years after it took place. Both fighters hit each other a total of 783 times. It took five days for the swelling to go down, and the Poland star had to undergo minor surgery on her ear to make a full recovery. What's more is Evangelista Santos' skull fracture against Michael Page. The Brazilian veteran has been fighting in 
MMA for 50 years. He's got an impressive record of 32 wins and 18 losses, and has fought for some huge promotions. But when Santos fought Michael Page at Bellator 158, which took place in London's O2 Arena in July 2016, he suffered from the most terrible injury one could imagine. Page hit him with a flying knee that just missed his forehead and knocked him out. The knockout was insane, and he had to be rushed to the hospital after the fight, but he was still screaming in pain from when that devastating blow broke his skull. But wait, it gets crazier. The x-ray showed that his forehead was so badly cracked that doctors didn't want to operate on him because they were afraid it would cause permanent brain damage. Whoa. Let's look at Auster Overeem's split lip against Jazino Rosenstrike. Another injury that made it to this list happened at the ESPN7 showdown at Capital One Arena in Washington, when Jazino Rosenstrike stopped Auster Overeem four seconds before the end of the fight. The fight started out slowly, and Overeem took Rosenstrike down several times. After all, he has been on our list of the most scary MMA fighters for a reason. But after that, the opponent landed a vicious right hand to Overeem's face with four seconds left in the fifth round. The blow was so hard that it split up his lip. The right hand that BG Boy threw at the Demolition Man is still remembered as one of the strongest in recent history. It knocked him to the ground and made the referee stop the fight right away, declaring Rosenstrike as the winner. As a result of the horrible fight, Auster had to get plastic surgery to fix his lip. Let's talk about Leslie Smith's exploded ear against Jessica I. The fight between these two in the women's bantamweight division at UFC 180 in November 2014 kept us on our toes at all times. The first round of the fight was pretty good, as both fighters threw good shots. But in the second round, it got much more violent when I kept hitting Smith and landed a big right hook on her cauliflower ear, which caused it to explode. It practically looked like her ear was torn in half since blood was spraying everywhere inside the octagon. The referee immediately stopped the fight to give I the TKO win, while doctors rushed in to look at Smith's injury and worked on it for a long time. But it seemed like the woman wasn't too happy with the referee's decision to end the fight, since she didn't seem to feel any pain. Finally, Matt Mitrione's fractured orbital and dislocated shoulder against Travis Brown. In January 2016, Matt Mitrione fought Travis Brown at UFC Fight Night 81. Brown was one of the top 10 heavyweights back then, and his opponent was a great fighter in his own right. The fight was pretty even until the third round, when Brown threw a right cross that hit his opponent in the right eye, which swelled up right away. The punches didn't stop, and it got so bad that his orbital bone broke. Even though fractured orbital bones are a common type of injury in the UFC, in this particular eye injury, which looked like a golf ball was stuck under Mitrione's eyelid, made him lose eyesight completely during the third round. The referee said that Travis had won the fight by TKO, and as for the other guy, he seemed to have barely avoided one of the worst injuries and possible death in UFC history. That's a wrap for this video. What did you think about these extremely gruesome and painful injuries in MMA history? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.